Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I know we have a pretty good spirit already. I know the music makes it great, but I think we can push the roof up a little bit higher. Can I have a hear another good morning, please? Good morning. Good morning. I'm really happy to be here and see all of your faces today. It's really amazing. Um, I really love how we can worship God and our parents through the music. And the band did really a good job today. And through the music today, I can really feel Tom's spirit. I really, I really think he was on stage playing his guitar, and I think many of you might have thought the same. Actually, the youth band for me was the first step to being more involved in the community here. Um, I love playing guitar, and I had a chance here to, to, to participate by playing guitar. And but it was, I had great experiences to kind of share the skill with the community and really receive, receive that um, spirit that comes down through the music. And now I'm very honored and I have the opportunity to stand in front of you today and um, share my experiences and the lessons I learned. And um, I hope that you will find um, inspiration or an impetus for reflection, something that you can take away from today. I chose the topic to be feeling God's heart and embodying it in everyday life. I want to share my story of, of my journey um, of trying to reach God very desperately um, and turned into finding God within me and how that allowed me to find a way to substantiate the love that I felt in everyday life. Four and a half years ago, a great adventure began. I finished high school, I had the opportunity to travel to Korea, to Israel, to the United States for church events, and soon after that, I was introduced to my beloved wife, Shinoa, who is right now at the back of the stage with the baby on her back. <laughs> soon enough, in the summer of 2011, I came over here to the United States to join her, and I started college here at UB, and served the last three years, we managed to get our bachelor degrees, both of us, and uh, we have two children now and we're starting to get into our careers. Well, it's been very tough, a very steep learning curve, but we made it through and I'm really ha able, happy to be able to stand here in front of you with having that intense part of my life um, work towards through and work out and be able to share something that um, I learned about um, through reflecting on those last years because I feel I have the time, the mindset to reflect of what actually happened the last three years. I felt, um, one point that I really felt deeply is that I felt um, the death and spirituality in my life. I was, I was missing something, there was something missing. And I think I was missing God, and feeling God's heart. And I say missing because I had that early in my life. So my story begins with um, being that crazy kid, maybe a young teenager. Um, I, I was a crazy kid who, at, at those harp workshops, in Germany we say harp high school association for the research of the principal, second gen workshops, and I was really crazy about the principal for some reason. I was like a sponge soaking it up. I was fascinated by the logic and how everything just makes sense, how it explained where we are right now. But the understanding was very rational, intellectual, and I saw those lecturers crying, speaking about the fall, speaking about how the providence got prolonged. I saw people crying when they prayed, and I didn't feel the depth that they had, the depth of their relationship with God. So it, I was really looking for that, because I wanted to experience, I want to experience the depth and the love that they felt. And one way of um, searching for that was through chant song conditions. At that time, you know, this bowing condition was very big, and um, we were asked to do a lot of bowing conditions for, for 
for certain, for certain things in our movement for the providence. So I developed a very strong devotion to that. And I can show the first picture of um, my father and my brother and myself. Um, I think that was when my father completed 21,000 kyongbaes. So that was, we were really behind that. <laughs> That's the setup we had. I think it was a twin mattress cut in half, covered in towels. Um, that's where we offered our vows every day. Um, through, through these vows and through this chong song, I, I really got to give myself into, into offering myself to God. It was an experience for me to I'm close to God, to understand and kind of God feels God's love for humanity so desperately wanting to give and to give. It was I had a very amazing and deep experiences through that and I really felt close to God. I felt God's sorrow, I felt God's pain. I started doing 120 a day and sometimes when I was a prayer request from, from someone in the community, maybe another 40 or another 40. It was I was really devoted to doing this because that was my way to be close to God, my way to give something, to have a way to, to bring change. But after a while, um, those numbers of how many hours I did it lost the lost meaning. It was always about more and more and more, and I still. <laughs> I started to doubt, is this is the right thing to do? Does this really make sense? It was really an, an internal conflict that I went through. What happens if I don't do that? Isn't this my responsibility? Shouldn't I do everything I possibly can to comfort God, to build a foundation for change to happen in that, in that way through those terms and conditions? But after a while, um, my rationality kind of came through and I just, I just couldn't do it anymore and didn't feel right to do it anymore because there was no limit, there was no healthy boundary that I could set. So I ended up um, stopping these conditions with a lot of confusion, which I couldn't, questions that I couldn't answer. And um, I think I just put it under the carpet because I just didn't know what to do with it. It was just confusing. And since then, um, I guess I lost kind of the trust that I had in God. Because I really put myself into it, and at the other end, all what I got was confusion. I didn't, I didn't, there was no, there was not God's love or God's heart that I could ultimately reach. I didn't lose faith, but I really, I, I couldn't connect to God in that artistic way. Through my reflection recently, um, and through talking to good friends and talking to my wife a lot about that, I learned, or I, I understood, um, and I could process what, what happened, what I experienced. And what I learned was that when we look for God, we won't find God where we look for God, we'll find God within ourselves. And if we, if, God, if we start from point A and want to get to point B, and we're trying really hard to get to point B, and then we don't find anything at point B. So it can be very frustrating. But what, what I went through, I, I really tried to get to point B, or sometimes maybe point C or D, and trying to search and search, but in the end it comes back to point A. And you'll see that it was there all the time. It just took you so long to kind of see that. And for me that was going through a lot of personal growth, overcoming a lot of personal difficulties, learning about myself, becoming the person that I am now. And instead of having to reach out to God so desperately and feeling God in that way, I understood that God is in me and I don't need to reach out, I need to reach in. So there was this, in the lyrics of the song that we just heard, it said, 
darkest night and the lightning which will, will guide you. So that was very inspiring for me because if we look for God, it's, it's on ourselves and we really have to have the darkness, the emptiness, and the solitude sometimes to and also the, the maturity and the right mindset and consciousness and awareness to look up within ourselves. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so able to do that through accepting myself and accepting my experiences. Not trying to push my experiences away and denying what happened, but to process to process them and learning from them and Accepting those experiences that they're making me the person that I am. They're making me the person that I am. So, um, I was able to trust in God again. And I think that was the most important point. I was able to, to trust my life, put my life into God's hand. And that took I guess a lot of courage. Because oh, where, where there's love, there is hurt. And where there's love, there needs to be trust. And um, going through that hurt, but still having that trust and really finding that love in the end, that was a very deep and moving experience for me. But how does God love feel for me now, now that I feel that I can find it in, in myself? I think that's a big question everyone asks. Everyone says you have to go, you have to find God within you, but how does it, how does it feel? How does, how does it feel to have God in you? And for me, it is living with consciousness, awareness, and mindfulness about God's love for us, for the humanity, and for awareness of God's greatest hopes for 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 this world. And living, living with that awareness of what God wants to offer us, what God want, want us to be, what, what God hopes me to be, to, to, to be able to bring, to bring, bring, bring um, change into this world, have, have this communion with God through prayer, Undercame meditation or reflection or other conditions or even vows, now that I look back to the vows, it was for me to align myself and to have the time with God. <coughs> and especially through through prayers I was able to, to to reach out to God and have that communion with God and always be in touch with God and what I can do, what I can do, what I have to do for myself to become the person God needs me to be, to bring change. And how can I share the love and that hope with, with my environment, in your profession, or in, you know, there, there's, there's you, as if, it doesn't matter what you do as a professional, you know, you have to do what you love to do, that's the most important thing. But if you have that, in addition to that, if you have that awareness of what God wants you to do with that, what 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 God's hope is for you to to, to, to reach with that, that, that can give whatever you do a, a different dimension. It can give it more meaning and depth. You already love what you do, you already love what you do, but you can change something with what you do in a much greater 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 sphere in a much greater way because you invite God to it. Amen. Amen. So being present and open for God um, allows God for you to allows God to work with you. You have to. I've, I learned that I have to be really clear and conscious and mindful. And um, even though we have a busy day or you have a busy week, just to come back to that point. Um, where you connect to God and reflect on how you, how you can how you can share this love um, with with your environment and with, with your friends and with your family.
There is one quote um, with which I want to end my sermon today, and it is um, from Father's speech, The Way of God's Will, which um, was born in the 1980s. Science, always pray in your life as you walk. Pray that you may be able to live according to God's word and that his words may be transformed into flesh and blood within you. We, we can embody that love. We can embody God's love for, for, for humanity and for, for everyone. We'll be an instrument for, for change. Thank you very much.